Well, good evening there, candidates of the ECMA program. I'm delighted, as always, to be one of the coaches for this amazing academy, began by the incomparable Mr. Henry Harris. This is a program that changes the lives of many, many indie recording artists and will for many years to come. So um, I am delighted to be in the call tonight and look forward to our future uh, sessions. And I want you to get ready to learn some things that are new and for many of you, review some things that you may have kind of slacked off of um, or could be doing consistently, but um, be reminded to continue in them for the development, maintenance, and uh, performance aspect of your vocal career. So let's get right into it. Uh, you, if you have not already received it, will receive uh, the syllabus and you see it on your screen. Uh, it gives a description and overview of what we're going to cover this academic season. Uh, this particular course uh, is called Vocal Principles of Development, Maintenance, and Performance. Vocal Principles of Development, Maintenance, and Performance 201. Those of you who have repeated from last year know that we went over vocal development, maintenance, and performance. This year we're going to revisit some of those things, actually all of it, and excel from there. There's going to be a strong emphasis on the performance aspect. Um, last season, we did not have enough time to spend on the performance aspect, but we're really going to focus in on that this year. Uh, I'll go quickly over the syllabus and we'll get into the meat of development, maintenance, and performance of your voice. Um, as you know, I'm the instructor, Selena Olivia Morris Breland. That's a phone number for me where you can contact me. Um, it is a voice mailbox. Uh, so definitely leave a message and I'll call you back from that number. Uh, my email is selenaoliviamusic at gmail.com. That comes directly to my mobile phone. So you can reach me at the email address anytime, um, no matter what time zone you're in. A course description of this course. A successful vocalist consistently invests in their vocal career throughout its duration for resources and training tools to ensure their success. Anyone in any industry, in any career, uh, who's successful consistently throughout their entire career consistently gets training and resources. They do not get lax and uh, just coast along. They continue to learn. I work at a law firm where uh, all of the lawyers have some form of training every single year. And when it comes to a vocal career, a recording career, you want to be the best at you. Not comparing yourself to anyone else, but be the best at you and make sure that you, when it comes to your instrument, are following the standards of that particular industry um, and increasing from those standards. I believe that in the years to come, musically, we're going to find geniuses coming out the woodworks and they're going to take different types of modes uh, and when I say modes I mean major minor um, you have different types of skills when it comes to music theory that we won't really go deeply into but we'll cover somewhat in this course that I believe they're going to fuse them some already are especially in gospel music gospel music and Christian music particularly gospel, tends to explore that area and combine different modes, and it's exciting to hear musically. So um, a successful vocalist consistently invests in their career. This course explores how to integrate development, maintenance, and performance methods and techniques to secure a vocal career and excel in that career. So secure that career as in making it long-lasting. If you do not take care of your voice, your voice will not last, and therefore your career does not. Uh, and many vocalists don't limit themselves to singing, but they also write, and then they have the option of retiring from the singing aspect and just write songs for other vocalists, which is smart. It keeps the money going. Uh, Mr. Harris dealt with very well the 42 streams of income and more that you can get in the music industry. Uh, there are streams all over other places you can do. If you don't limit yourself and uh, box yourself into just one aspect of music, 
or the arts. So this course explores how to integrate development, maintenance, and performance methods and techniques to secure a vocal career and excel in that career. It examines classical standards, fusing them with popular music styles, creating an, an impressive result of variety and sonorous excellence. Sonor sonorous is an extension of sonority, which sonority is sound, basically. S sonorous excellence that breathes the purpose of, ECM of the ECMA program, which is to create an excellence about uh, the Christian musician, Christian artist. So the course objectives are for you to learn methods and techniques for vocal development, maintenance, and performance to gain confidence and ability to musical vocalization that's consistent and excellent. So basically you gain confidence to consistently sing at a, a level that you would not be ashamed for anyone to hear, even those that have been in the same industry for years. Or you, you could take it to someone like a Donnie McClurkin or stepping out of the gospel arena but going to Celine Dion, someone like her would hear your recording or hear you sing live and you would not be embarrassed because your uh, standard and your, your discipline as a vocalist is intact. Three, develop lifestyle, lifestyle habits that promote a healthy body and voice. Develop lifestyle habits that promote a healthy body and voice all the way from what you drink, what you eat, how often you exercise, how you use your voice. If you uh, pay attention to how I speak all the time, unless, <laughs> unless I'm extremely tired and not paying attention, you'll hear that I lift my soft palate often. Um, I naturally have a monotone voice, so if I do not lift my soft palate, it ends up being just very boring. So I lift my soft palate often, especially if I'm paying close attention and we'll talk about what the soft palate is for those of you who are like, what is she talking about? Um, and that's something that a vocalist should always do. I often hear people say, you're a singer, aren't you? I can tell by the way you talk. And that's because I'm very, very, very cautious and um, purposely gentle with my voice. Um, I did deal with a recent sickness where there were times where uncontrollably I could not treat my voice the way that I um, I even teach to, and quickly when I could, I, um, redeemed that time by doing various therapeutic methods and drinking certain teas and drinks and stuff like that, things like that to, um, help take care of the voice. So and we'll talk about that in detail. Uh, you will also, um, not only develop a lifestyle or lifestyle habits that promote a healthy body and voice, but lifestyle habits that will reinforce the development that you've done um, throughout the uh, span of this course. This course, and I'm about to deal with it uh, momentarily, the assignments, the framework of the assignments will be heavily with the oral, A-U-R-A-L, which means sound. So you're, so you're going to get used to listening to yourself. Many vocalists do not listen to themselves, therefore do not critique themselves, and then do not expand their vocal skills. So in this course, I strongly believe in the vocalist hearing themselves. Often when I'm doing a one-on-one -on -one session with a vocalist, I will ask them how did they sound. They hate that. Um, some of you on the call are have had one-on-one -on -one sessions with me. You, um, it's it's very uncomfortable to critique yourself because, especially in front of someone, because you have to be honest because they heard you too. <laughs> if you're just listening to yourself alone, um, there's that temptation to lie to yourself and deny the errors and the flaws, which is unhealthy, um, and you don't get anywhere that way. Uh, to critique yourself honestly is healthy and uh, causes you to push yourself and excel as this academy uh, reflects excellence. So you will develop lifestyle habits that promote health and promote um, increase in your development and enhancing the skill. The required materials are simple, a basic understanding of singing and musical vocalization, which um, all of you have, I'm sure. And then the second one, the current academic season syllabus for vocal training, which is the, what you see on the screen and also what you'll have in your inbox if you have not received it already. 
Uh, preferred materials are the 3D Vocalist Premium Performance Guidebook. I'll be referencing um, much of the material, actually all of the material from that guidebook that I have. Um, it's only $4.99. You do not have to buy it. It just is helpful to buy it. Academic integrity is important. I wanted to make sure this was in here. Um, all of the students or the participants are responsible for adhering to the guidelines outlined in ACMA. I'm sorry for the typo there. Um, the ECMA academic integrity standard, basically what Mr. Harris requires uh, as far as attendance and participation, do it. It, it only helps you. Um, students are unclear on the details of or of the standards should consult Mr. Harris. Don't um, be hesitant to ask him or the administrative support team of ECMA. Now when it comes to this course, if there's anything unclear about the syllabus or anything I've said in a class uh, session as we go on, definitely contact me at the contact information you see at the top of the syllabus. So the assignment framework, as I was saying before, uh, the oral portion is a heavy portion. Theory will cover, it might not even be 30%, it'll be a little less than that. And the practical and written will be definitely 30%, if not about 35 So uh, the, the live performance portion is going to be the... Um, uh, only those that are chosen for the gala performance. Uh, as you know, Mr. Harris will choose some participants to perform at this year's gala. Um, these participants will have a master class style training closer to the date of the gala. So, um, and that's to be announced. Uh, once the date is known for sure and the time, it will definitely be communicated to you. This course adheres to the point system designed specifically for the ECMA program, so there is no A through F grading, as you know. Um, I wanted to make sure that was clear because of how official I've made the syllabus. It's, um, it's just something that I use, period, when I teach, and I wanted to make sure you had that as well. Let's quickly go into principles of vocal development, principles of vocal maintenance, and principles of performance. Those of you who are repeating from last year will recognize much of what I said, what much of what I say tonight, as um, you will, you already know from what I've mentioned before, on the uh, handouts that you will receive, you will see a diagram of the respiratory system. It's very important that a vocalist knows that their voice is not just their vocal cords and the organs that are in that region where the throat and the mouth is that's not your that's not the only aspect or part of your voice that's one aspect the voice is actually divided into three parts and those of you from last year most likely remember um, you have the respirator the vibrator and the resonator respirator the vibrator and the resonator the respirator of course is the respiratory system the breathing, uh, so you have the, the lungs and the esophagus, that entire area in the torso, that's the respirator. The resonator is the nasal passage, um, that whole area there. Uh, the nasal passage and the top of the mouth somewhat um, all in there. And I actually personally include where the ears are because the ears need to be maintained and kept healthy just as much as the nasal passage. You also have the vibrator, which is the most popular, where your vocal cords are. You have the vocal cords, you have the larynx, you have all those organs there, and the throat, of course. And those must be taken care of in order for there to be complete health, health with the voice. So your voice is not just your vocal cords, but you have that entire area. So basically, from where your eyes are all the way down to the top of your um, abnormal area where your intestines are is the voice. Uh, some of you may be saying wow in your mind or wow, it's a little, it's, it's, isn't that a little too technical? No, it's not. It's very important that you take care of that entire area. Um, I know that personally. <laughs> so, when it comes to vocal development, you have to look at all of those three. How do, you, how do I develop all of these three areas? How do I develop all of these three areas of my voice in order for my voice to operate 
flow the way that it should so that my performance will not only be sound good but my performance will be consistent have you ever noticed where you go to sing um whether it's one particular song in multiple different occasions and different atmospheres and your voice does not respond the same you're not able to hit the same notes that you were last month singing the same exact song today um same key same musician with you or track and it's just totally different there are different dynamics that affect performance when we get to the performance aspect, you will hear more about that. But the first thing is your vocal health. If you had something to drink or eat or were in an atmosphere with cigarettes or something of the sort uh, before one performance but had a totally, completely clean atmosphere before the other, it's going to be different. So it's very important that you are protective of not only your, your voice, uh, those that have seen pictures of me, maybe on uh, social media or what what have you, you see me with this huge pink scarf on. It is, uh, I, I do not leave without it. Um, and it's very important. And in a future vi video, I will show you where. Uh, but right above your collarbone in the middle, if you where your esophagus is, very, the very middle of your chest, if you go up to where your collarbone, collarbone is, um, just before your neck or throat begins, that area right there where your voice box is, it's the most important area to keep covered. Um, you should wear a top that covers that area, and if you don't have a top that covers that area, you should absolutely positively have a scarf on during these cold seasons. Some of you live in a warmer climate, so it's different. I believe that you should wear a scarf, period. In different climates, just change the material according to the climate. Now, in really, really hot climates, there's no need to wear a scarf that would cause you to sweat, and that could cause other issues. So uh, that is very important to cover your voice, to protect it. That's one aspect of protecting your voice. And the other is the one I already mentioned, atmosphere. Make sure you're in a, um, you should be in a room temp spot. Um, and realistically, of course, you can't always be in a room temp room, you know, at like 70, um, 65 to 70 degrees, something like that is decent. Um, if you have to go outside, make sure you cover up. Um, it's very important to cover your head as well, even if you have um, thick, thick hair or um, long hair, you should have some type of hat on so the cold air doesn't, cold air is enters into your ear openings um, at a drastic rate and drastic temperature, it will affect your um, ears, which are connected to your nose and your throat. Um, your ENT would tell you that. So it's very important to cover your ears, earmuffs, a hat, something, to cover your ears during these cold seasons. So protecting your voice um, is very important in the development process. And going and jumping into maintenance, it's, um, as you can tell, a passion of mine. So with development, developing those three areas, the resonator, vibrator, and respirator, you want to develop all of them. How do I develop the respirator? Your breathing, consistent breathing and breathing that is of the type of a singer that you would do. Diaphragmatic breathing, which is actually healthy for anyone to do. It's a must for a singer to do. Um, when you breathe in, your uh, abdominal area should expand. When you exhale, your abdominal area should contract. So it's almost as if, uh, picture um, a balloon inside of you, and when you go to breathe air in, the air is going into the balloon. The balloon does not contract, does not get smaller, but it expands. And when you release the air from the balloon, it contracts. Your abdominal area, your, your torso, that lower part of your torso should expand when you breathe in. It should contract when you breathe out. If it's not doing that, you have shallow breathing. And therefore, it will affect your voice. And developing the respirator portion of your voice, you want to breathe appropriately. 
with diaphragmatic breathing. Your diaphragm is used in this breathing. And actually, this Saturday, I will do, we'll be doing a master class and we'll demonstrate diaphragmatic breathing. So if you want to actually see that, I will be demonstrating that um, this Saturday. Diaphragmatic breathing, um, I just basically explained that your uh, midsection should expand when you breathe in and contract when you breathe out. Proper development of the voice is essential. This course helps you as a vocalist properly develop your breathing posture and vocal technique. This is done with various breathing, physical, and vocal exercises. In this course, we will cover a few of the most effective breathing, posture, and vocal exercises and techniques that help in the development of your voice. In the handouts that you receive, if you have not received it already, you will see a performance technical foundation chart. I use this for the beginning stages of working with the vocalist. Um, and then it's used for reference throughout the time that we work together, even in the more advanced stages. Uh, in your performance, the basic, the bottom line, the, the foundation of your vocal performance um, should have all of these areas, these dynamics, for lack of better words, in place and excelling and increasing. So your interpretation, your expression, your resonance, your uh, registers should be developed, determining what range, vocal range you have at the time that you start doing development and what range you desire to have and working toward that. Uh, phonation deals with the balance of your voice, the uh, frequency that your voice creates, which phonation deals with not only vocalization musically, but vocalization as far as speech. Support, which deals with your breathing, and then that's the next aspect, breathing. So your support and breathing are very much so intertwined, as well as all of these, actually. Your posture is very important. Now let me say them in order, in the order that I um, teach them in and believe that they are uh, succinct and follow uh, the other. So your posture should be developed first. You should work on your posture. There's ways to do that. You'll see diagrams in the handouts that I give um, where you stand up against the wall, press your shoulders up against the wall, bring your feet um, healthily apart, maybe about not even a foot, maybe about nine inches apart, um, or the, the width of your shoulders technically. And um, Standing in that position, doing your breathing, and I often have vocalists, especially the beginning stages, stand and do the entire lesson like that. It feels awkward, but it, it uh, creates muscle memory in their back to stand that way. As Americans, and there may be some, they're not Americans on here, but um, uh, Western habits are to have bad, bad posture. In fact, I'm reinforcing mine um, recently as well. Um, in our corporate work settings and things of that nature, we tend to slouch, uh, depending on how high the desk is, if the desk is not the right height, things like that. And when it comes to occupational therapy, you'll find that they focus highly on the living, um, the living and working, um, uh, Areas there that that the person or the patient is exposed to. So if they work at a desk, how their desk is um, at home when they wash dishes, how high their counter is, if the counter is the right height for their height, all of those types of things. So it is very important for you as a vocalist to work on your posture and to maintain it. So that's one way, one exercise to do. And then doing back, back exercises and strengthening exercises for the back portion of you, from the back of your neck, the shoulders, down to the mid-back, lower back, all the way down to the thighs and, um, and your legs being strengthened um, through aerobic exercises and things of that nature helps, helps a lot. You'll, you'll know when you're not healthy by how your voice sounds. So... Um, posture is the first. Then breathing is is next in line for import, importance, I believe. Um, if the person is not breathing correctly when it comes to singing, then it affects the sound, and it also then affects their, their vocal health as well. If you're not breathing properly, then you misuse the voice often. The tone will be off, and sometimes because your ear is hearing the tone off, the tone is off, you'll push more rather than adjusting your breathing. 
And so that in turn hurts that in turn hurts your voice. So posture and breathing and support. Support deals with when I believe it's a combination of the breathing and the posture. The support deals with when you breathe, how you breathe, your posture all being in place. It creates a support and therefore produces consistency. So if you breathe right, your posture is right, you'll find that your voice is more consistent because you've created this this structure for your voice to operate through or flow through. And we'll also talk about using your headspace too in future uh, courses, excuse me, class sessions. So you have posture breathing support phonation deals with the balance of your voice there are some vocalists on this call that have more vibrato than others when your posture and breathing is intact and you and you begin to gain more and more vocal control you'll find that you'll be able to play with or um adjust as at at will your um your vibrato i'll give a quick demonstration so um, let me sing the song, Jesus Loves Me. So, Jesus loves me, this I know. No vibrato at all. That's like one breath, sang the whole phrase. Here I'm going to play with it and give it more of a gospel sound rather than a child-like sound. Jesus loves me. This I know. So it's had a little bit more vibrato. You could even go more than that with a classical sound. Jesus loves me. This I know. And then there you go. Um, we could go on and on with different styles. So phonation deals with the frequency, the consistency of your voice. So do you use a lot of vibrato? Is it controlled vibrato? Are you purposely using that much vibrato? Or is it because you are not familiar with your voice and automatically you do a nat- naturally do a vibrato? There are many vocalists that do a natural vibrato and then have to bring it under control. And there's some vocalists that sing straight and want vibrato and have to use control to um, to begin to use vibrato. I was going to say manipulate, but that sounds negative. Begin to use vibrato as a dynamic to enhance the sound of a phrase or a song. Then you have your registers. You begin to develop your registers. Once your phonation and consistency, the frequency of, of your voice uh, has gained control from you having support, from you breathing properly, from you having good posture, you begin to develop your registers. Your range is defined. So you can... Uh, you, You've already determined by this point if you're a mezzo soprano, which is alto, uh, if you're a soprano one, if you are a uh, men tenor, if you're a bass or baritone, and you begin to define your registers from this development process. So you know how low you can go, how high you can go, where your strength is, where does your voice break. At my voice break, then creating the, what we call mixed voice, combining the falsetto or head voice with the chest voice, which we'll talk about as well. So from so resonance is the sound of your voice, the actual sound itself, uh, which resonance and intonation is also is are all all often, excuse me, interchanged. Resonance and intonation deals with your tone. How is your tone? Does does your tone have a pleasant sound? Does it have a harsh sound? There's a concept called uh, glottaling or to glottal and it deals with the glottalis which is a term that refers to your vocal cords bumping together which is not a good sound if you ever heard someone sound like when they're singing they're sounding like they're talking kind of that is a glottal you don't want to do that Um, it ends up eventually being harmful to your voice but it's harmful to the ear first of all and you don't want to do that. You want to actually have a, an artsy, sketchy sound, um, which there are many tricks to doing that. And when we get into the performance aspect, we'll talk about a soft H. What is a soft H? Where do you place it when it comes to diction? Uh, bre- breath mapping, breathing mapping. We'll deal with that. Where to put your breath uh, or breathing points at? Where do you breathe? Um, is it after the phrase, in the middle of the phrase, in the middle of a word? That's a no-no.
never breathe in the middle of a word. You'll hear even the best singers for some reason, the best as in the ones that are most popular, um, not necessarily when it comes to skill, but the ones that are most popular have a bunch of sales breathing in the middle of a word. Um, I'm very particular, so I can't stand it when I hear it, but it, it is what it is. Sometimes um, they forget that it's, um, one, proper, two, not good for the entire piece, or the entire, entire song ends up breaking it up in a way that is not <sighs> good for the, the entire song. In fact, what I just did is something you, could, you should place in the stead of uh, coughing or scratching your voice. It's uh, you use the air to push whatever is happening in your throat. Um, if you have any phlegm, sorry for the uh, vivid term that I use, but if you have any phlegm or anything drainage going on with your sinuses, which often happens during the season, um, the winter season, you can push the phlegm with your air. And then off the the, the most popular way, uh, the best way is really with water. Um, so, at any rate. Resonance is the next phase or next uh, block of technical foundation that you want to secure. So your resonance, you're having control over your tone, which all of the things we cover build up to that. I strongly believe your posture affects your breathing. Your breathing affects your uh, support, which your posture and breathing are your support together, in essence. Your posture, breathing, support, affect your phonation, the consistency of your voice, the frequency, whether you have a vibrato or not, and all the aspects within that. Then you deal with your registers, your your range. All of those things we just covered deal with your range and affect your range. If you're not breathing properly, you can't go high. Um, your range will be limited. Um, if you're not if there's not consistency in your phonation, which deals also with how your vocal cords are used, which there's a concept called chord closure, which we'll deal with as well. If you hear those vocalists, Kim Burrell does it really well. There's a couple of jazz singers that do it very well, chord closure. Um, at the higher end of their range, they begin to close their chords tightly, not completely closed, but bring them tight where there's a sound, almost like they sound like a brass instrument. They sound like a trumpet. It's amazing to hear. <sighs> and then expression. The expression. The expression of the song. Are you expressing the intent of the song, of the piece? And often it's difficult to do this with um, uh, with songs that are slow in pace. The longer the note, the harder, the, or the more challenging it is to keep the expression, the integrity of the expression throughout the entire song. <laughs> you have to be energetic. You can't be lazy with it to ca to carry it in tone. So, uh, expression and then interpretation. Are you interpreting the song well? Uh, the lyrics. Are you interpreting? Are you putting emphasis on the right words where the writer wants there to be emphasis? Um, all of these things build on top of each other and create a great great performance. <laughs> all right. We will deal with, um, I've dealt with a lot of vocal maintenance in between the points that I've covered concerning developing the voice um, and, the, and the, the technical foundation. Um, definitely take a look at the handouts. I don't want to go to, um, I don't want to continue to uh, go on and on concerning the uh, technical foundation. I want to actually, uh, us to advance beyond that and actually deal with different types of exercises, um, we'll deal with lip trills, uh, the jaw stretch, things of that nature. So the next class you will actually see a video with me and possibly a singer. I'm working on that <laughs> outside of myself. So I can point and show where you need to do what and tell them how to stand and things of that nature so you can see for yourself um, how you should carry out a performance. And not just a performance, but prior to that you're practicing and you're rehearsing, which we've talked about is different, and we'll cover that in the next class. Uh, those of you from last year, I'm sure, remember the difference. In fact, um, as part of tonight's, or, or this class's assignment, I want you to, those of you who have not heard me speak on it before, guess on what the difference is between rehearsing and, perf 
uh, rehearsing and practicing. What's the difference between rehearsing and practicing? Just think about the definitions. If you just look up the definition, you kind of and and compare it to vocalization, singing, you will find a way to word it. Um, I'm eager to see what your answers are. I would love to receive it by the end of this week. Um, and I know many of you have busy schedules and there's other classes that are going to be happening. So I would love to see that. And then in addition to that, uh, part of the assignment is to record a song completely dry. I don't want it in a studio. Those of you who have smartphones, record it on your smartphone and email it to selenaolivianmusic at gmail.com. Record the entire, entire song, preferably radio edit length, so four minutes or less. Make sure you have tempo, um, preferably use a metronome. If you don't have a metronome, you can find it in the app store of whatever type of phone you have, whether it's Android or iOS, Apple. Record yourself singing a song, any song. Um, it really would be great for you to record one of your, your songs, whatever you perform on a regular basis um, or planning to perform record it and send it to me. I want that by the end of the week as well. So two-part assignment. Define or explain the difference between practicing and rehearsing, which I did not cover tonight, but I'm eager to see your responses. Those of you from last year should remember. And then two, record yourself. I'm actually going to do something special at the end of the class, the next session, um, that... I'll leave as a surprise up until a few days before, and I'll get I'll communicate to those of you who are chosen for it um, to to confirm that we're on, a, we're on the same page and that you agreed to that special portion of the class being a participant. You may know what I have in mind, um, but we'll see. So that's that's it for the night. I wanted to go over the syllabus. I wanted to give an overview of what we'll be dealing with and get into the development portion of principles of vocal development. Next class, we will complete principles of vocal development, dealing with um, more in detail those technical foundations, how to implement them in developing, so actually applying it, not just talking about how to do it, but de demonstrating, all right? And we're going to deal with exercises um, and techniques to use while developing your voice. And they'll also, of course, as you can imagine, be used in the actual vocal performances. You'll create a muscle memory in your uh, throat area and also a memory in your mind, too, of how to do the various techniques, and it'll naturally happen when you sing. You'll find it as you discipline yourself and consistently do it. Um, it doesn't automatically become natural to you, but after uh, making a habit of it and doing it consistently, it begins to happen naturally in your singing. So that's it for tonight. If you have any uh, questions or concerns, um, I'm going to open the floor for that. And um, whatever we don't have time for tonight, then I will answer via email.